Hello people, this is Socrates Stan. In this video, I will analyze the radicalization of Hamza Georges. Hamza Georges is the godfather of the modern social media Islamist movement. All the arguments you see with the types of Mohammed Hijab, Ali Dawa, uh, Imran Hussein, Sobur Ahmed and the rest of it, all the, the social media figures you see on YouTube, Twitter and so on, debating, okay, all these arguments, Hamza Georges, not invented, but popularized and uh, brought, brought them to the modern context of the, of the debate. So those arguments existed in the classical Islamic thought and also uh, he combines also Western philosophy, the philosophy of science okay, and, and Western thought. So what he did is took all these arguments and brought them to the modern context. So, but if you are like me and often wonder how intelligent people believe the most apparent evil nonsense, that is Islam, and how good people get radicalized by following the transformation of Hamza Georges and the philosophy behind it, you will get your answers. To save some time, I used uh, an apostate prophet video to explain the recent events. He switched to this. Important clarification and apology. Over 10 years ago, I made a statement about the Had for Ridda that was incorrect. I was immediately critical of this because he's using the Islamic terms only without clarifying. Had here Why means... would he do that? Why would he do that? Because he doesn't want the general English-speaking non-Islamic public to know or the uh, authorities in charge or Twitter to immediately be able to um, see that he is outright saying, I believe apostates should be killed. So he's veiling it. He's being dishonest. He's a sneaky, sneaky, cowardly weasel. So j just to... Just to so so on the one hand, one, 10 years ago, he was saying, no, Islam believes in freedom of freedom of conscience and freedom of belief. So if someone wants to leave Islam, that's up to the person. We would never do anything to that sort of person. And now the the uh, the Muslims who are being honest about it, Ali Dawa and people like that, uh, I'm sure behind the scenes calling him out and their followers calling him out. Hey, why'd you say this? Why are you saying this? Are you saying that our Dawa guys are liars? Oh, damn. And then he gets to clarify it. But who's he trying to clarify it for? Who's this geared towards? Towards the Ummah. So what does he do? Does he say, does he post, hey, I affirm apostates will be killed. And we're working towards establishing an Islamic caliphate that will behead people like the apostate prophet. Is that what he says? No. Why? Because he's still trying. He's still, he's on the border. He's still trying to appeal uh, to Western viewers while thumping his chest for his Muslim readers. And so he uses the Muslim terms that your average English person is not going to understand. Your Eng your average English reader is going to look at this go, 10 years ago, I made a statement about the Had for Rida that was incorrect. Oh, who cares? They're talking about their fine legal points and so on. Uh, what he doesn't say is, yeah, I yeah, I made a I made a mistake when I said we don't have the death penalty for apostasy in Islam. So, yeah, we're going to we're going to go around. If we get our, our way, we're going to go around chopping these guys heads off. Yeah. I described the punishment and explained it in the wrong way. I have retracted those statements in the past, and I reiterate now for the sake of clarity and 100% transparency. I apologize for this mistake, and I want to make it very clear that I fully believe in, support, and defend all Islamic laws, including the punishment for apostasy including the punishment for apostasy no the had of ridda <laughs> <laughs> segregation of the sexes hudud in general so the all those corporal punishments in general etc i believe in these laws as per the understanding of traditional orthodox islam based on the understanding of the pious predecessors and the four schools of thought 
and has a qalb, a heart, has a aql, and the intellect is a function yeah. of the heart yeah. in the Islamic tradition, and it has a fitra, and the fitra is yeah. clouded. And yeah. within the fitra, the innate disposition, there are forms of proto knowledge in, 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 in the Islamic tradition that God is a reality and that He's worthy of worship, but that clouded. So it could be that a sound, rational argument, philosophical argument, whatever, can uncloud your innate disposition to awaken the truth within. Or it could be something else. It could be a combination of things. So when you ask me, it needs to be demonstrated, well, I need to find out who you are. Because I don't know where your cloud is. Maybe you need a rational argument. Maybe you need a good hug. Maybe you need some love. Maybe you need some really strong Quranic verses to wake you up because the reason for your disbelief is arrogance, right? Because the, the reason, reason for your, for your disbelief, disbelief is arrogance, arrogance right? 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 So according to Hamza Georgis, a hug is enough to enter Islam. But when you are to leave Islam, they need to execute you. <laughs> listen to this before. <laughs> listen, listen to this. So to enter Islam, a hug is sufficient. <laughs> But then you cannot leave. It's a death. <laughs> when you leave, they cut your head. <laughs> And thus to explain our signs and evidences for those who reflect. Brothers, sisters and friends, I hope what I'm going to say now is not taking out of my time because I follow an ethical tradition. And that ethical tradition is, is when you intellectually engage with others, you can't lie. So I'm very close to walking out, but I'm not because I want to respect all of you. I want to ask... Mr. Perkins, a question. You said knowledge is haram in Islam. I want you to give me the proof. Well, I... You said knowledge is haram, forbidden in Islam. I want textual proof from the Quran or the Sunnah, the prophetic traditions. If you don't do that, either admit you're lying or you're misinformed. <laughs> you're, a, you're a doctor, you're an academic, to come here, to come here, All types, all types of knowledge. To come here and to actually spew lies is unethical, it's demeaning, it's disrespectful, and it just shows bad on the atheist tradition. Okay. So please give me evidence why knowledge is haram in the Islamic tradition. Are you done now? Given that Islam is totalitarian and claims all aspects of social and intellectual life and human experience, and given the fact that as you admit it, you kill whoever doubts Islam, suppressing therefore freedom of conscience, freedom of speech, and free intellectual inquiry, you deemed all thought that is not Islamic being illegal. So by definition, you, make, you made knowledge haram. Islam means surrender. In other words, surrender your mind and soul, your, your reason and your moral conscience to revelations. That is Islam. Revelations trumps everything. Moral conscience, science, as you say, that... Uh, Islam is, you say that Islam is over the investigative ability of science. So how can you judge Islam with, this, with science when science is changing? This is what you say. So you already put revelations over science, over philosophy, 
over morality, over moral conscience, over... Okay. So, that is blind faith. And people who convert to Islam, like you, deteriorate from skeptics to blind cultists as time goes by. Okay, that is, that is the projection of people that convert to Islam. They become from skeptics and free thinkers more to blind cultists. And that is was your trajectory. Okay, with actual evidence. We can see what you were saying then and what you say now. So, not o- and not only that, we see a trajectory that goes from, from a skeptic to a blind cultist to people that convert to Islam as time goes by. And also, you become more and more radicalized. That is also very easily demonstrable in your case. If someone takes your videos and, and see the trajectory of your videos, the 15 years, you, you became more and more and more and more radicalized. Closer to an ISIS type of theocrat. Now, my friend, you are Daniel Hakikatsu. Okay. All, or most of your life, you were trying to convince people that, that Islam is not Daniel Hakikatsu. All your life, this is what you were doing. Now, you became Daniel Hakikatsu, in other words. What I said was... You said Mori was haram? Yes. <laughs> and if you're wrong, I want an apology. <laughs> It is very friendly. I'm just trying to teach people manners. Hamza Georgi is bullshit after bullshit. Without lies, Islam dies. Bullshit after bullshit. Guys, the only thing you need to do to refute Islam is nothing. Just wait. Just wait. There is a say which is kind of, uh, you know, vulgar say in Greece. It's, it, they say, seed eventually flow. If, if you put seed in the sea and you think you bury them, bury them, eventually the seed will flow in the surface. That is Islam. Because it was always seed. It, it, it just give it time and it will expose itself. Guys, how you recognize truth? Truth is like water. It fits with everything. It fits like puzzles. Okay. If you say something, I am here, and I say something which is true, and a person in China says something, continue the thought in China, those two will, will uh, fit like puzzle. Because it's true. Okay, if there is an alien in Andromeda galaxy and I say something which is true, this alien might, might say the same thing because, it's driven, because we both are driven to truth. Truth is one. It's not 100 things. Okay, so that is how you recognize truth. Many ta- I, don't, I don't want to brag or sound arrogant. But many times, I say something, okay, I say something, okay, and then I say something completely irrelevant to, for some other reason, and then see, oh, those two fit perfectly, perfectly, with, the, with the, this assumption, which was for something com- else, and with the conclusion of this assumption which was something else, if you put them together, fit perfectly, like puzzle. That is truth. Okay. Because you never said truth, because you Islamists never say truth, time keeps exposing you. 
Yeah, you keep nothing fits. Sometimes we, we, we belittle the Quran accidentally. When we see an ayah in the Quran that talks about, for example, the camels and how we created it, or when the, Allah says that you are an alaqa, you are a nutfatin min maniyin, or when Allah talks about natural phenomena, what do we do straight away? We say, ah, scientific miracle. This is rubbish. Ah, uh, now it's rubbish. Because a few years ago, you published a book, Embryology in the Quran, claiming that this is a scientific miracle. But after a couple of years, this is rubbish now. Okay. Sorry. This is wrong. Because what we've done, we've made science into a god now. We've deified science. And we've limited the Quran. Science changes. That even if you think science gives you absolute truth, it can always change. They are always defeasible. I'll bring out my notes, my postgrad notes for you to see now. Because you have some online idiots, no offense, don't want to swear. But you have online idiots from, you know, the skeptic tradition and the, the aggressive atheists. They think, oh, you know, science is like wahi, it's like revelation. It's not. It changes. The irony is that you also change your positions. So according to your argument, people should not trust you either. Isn't that right? Okay, what, well, what I said that he said was, okay. reason and rationality are useless and should be condemned. Okay, now if I have misinterpreted the word haram, perhaps I... Okay, if you noticed before, with the apostate prophet. Now, uh, Hamza Georges, uh, at, uh, he said that he admits the four schools of thought of Islam. In other words, the Hanbalis, Al-Ghazali, the, the literalist. So, you are a literal. So, wait just a moment. You are a literalist. In other words, you believe that we should read the Quran like zombies. The Quran is Islam is a totalitarian thing. It's not just mathematics or how to pray. It's, it's a total way of life, including everything. Even guys with what food you go in the toilet, with how many stones you wipe your behind me. Okay, it inclu the Quran includes everything. Everything. Okay. So, and you, like a literalist, that you are a Hanbali from the Hanbali school of literalists, think that for everything we should not think, rather trust the Quran like zombies, And if we, if we dare doubt, we should be killed. So, that is, Hamza Georges, that is making knowledge haram. You non-moron. Okay. Okay, Hamza Georges. In this conversation, there are two people who are not actually talking on the same level. There is a Muslim who is looking at the world through lenses, green lenses, and he's looking at the world as green. And there is a non-Muslim who is looking at the world through red lenses. So what's happening in the conversation is the Muslim is saying, this is green, this is green, this is green. The non-Muslim is saying, this is red, this is red, this is red. Why is that? The reason is, this is the case, is because the Muslim is looking at the world through the lenses of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. He believes that this man, called Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the final messenger of God, therefore whatever he says is true. Now, what I want to do is this. These are aspects of Islam that we all believe in and accept. What if I come along and I tell you something? I tell you hypothetically, 
before you do takfir on me, hypothetically, there is a sahih narration of the Prophet ﷺ that you have to wear a yellow hat on Sundays. Hypothetically. Raise your hand if you're going to wear a yellow hat on Sundays. Like, what's wrong with Shabir Ali? Um, I had no idea. But have, have you looked into his credentials? Have you looked into um, his background? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't, I didn't memorize them, but not too long ago, I checked them out and he just, you know, he's Western educated. So from the looks of it, what he has learned regarding Islam is going to be from the West. It's going to have that Oriental perspective, which is essentially poison. <laughs> so yes. Yeah. I wanted to share a benefit that we can all come come away with and remember um, there is this authentic quote of Ali, the great companion, may Allah be pleased with him. If this religion were based on opinion, then the bottom of the leather socks would be wiped instead of the top. But rather, I saw the messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wipe over the top of his leather socks. So there's two main points I just want us all to derive from this and to remember, um, especially as we react to this upcoming video. And number one, Islam is about following revelation. Islam is about submitting to Allah. Allah knows everything. He sent the Prophet ﷺ with guidance. So we, we submit to that, we follow that. If our intellect, our conjecture, our perspective conflicts with that, we know the deficiency is with our own perspective, our own conjecture. So that's a very simple, but it's a foundational concept of what Islam actually is. No. I follow an ethical tradition, and that ethical tradition is, is when you intellectually engage with others, you can't lie. So I'm very close to walking out, But I'm not because I want to respect all of you. I want to ask. So, Hamza Churches entered Islam in the atheist, uh, the new atheist era, when he was debating atheists, and he was saying as um, the apostate prophet describes, Islam is good. Don't believe all these kind of things. It's uh, they are misleading you. They know it. Okay. So now he retracts the reason he entered Islam in the first place. Then he entered Islam because of the scientific miracles of Islam. What you don't know, or, or some don't know, he also re retracted that. Now he says that uh, the scientific miracles in, in the Quran is nonsense. That is his words. Because science is changing. And the, uh, the Quran is over the investigative ability of science. So the two reasons, main reasons, that made him enter Islam, now he retracts both. So already we get a hint how intelligent people uh, convert to this mental evil <laughs> stupid. Evil stupid. First they enter, and once they they invest all their psychology, all the their name, their family, their friends in in this, they then understand the truth about Islam, but then it's too late. They already invested all their heart. So then they go the opposite, their, their logic goes the opposite direction. They, they use philosophy to, to try to explain what they already believe. And that is the difference of uh, dogma versus reason. And um, what is the other? So, sorry, guys. Um, um, Uh, philosophy against sophistry. Okay. The, the philosopher, a philosopher investigates truth. A sophist tries to justify what he already believes. So, Hamza Georges is a sophist. In other words, he believes something, he has invested all his heart in something, and then uses philosophy as a tool to pretend to himself what he already believes is true. Is true. So he, he, he takes reason the opposite direction.
Okay, and that is the explanation why intelligent people believe this the most evil, childish nonsense, which is Islam.